We a nation of raiders. It's a nation of raiders. We a nation of raiders. It's a nation of raiders. Hello and welcome to the Inbounds with the Oakland Raiders. I'm Melinda Torgerson and joining us today is Lamar Woodley, number 57, a defensive end for the Oakland Raiders. This is his eighth year in the NFL, first year with the Raiders. It's nice to have you here. Thanks for having me. I'm number 58. Oh, are you? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I got yeah. your number that's, wrong. No, that's I, not I nice. It. I switched oh, it. You I, did. I changed okay. it. I changed it. I should know that. I should be on top of that. I apologize. <laughs> no, no problem. So I know that you actually, you grew up in Michigan and you attended high school in Michigan. What was the name of your high school? Uh, Saginaw High. That's right. And then you attended University of Michigan. Yep, University of Michigan there. And what was your major while you were attending college? Well, at first I started off with kinesiology, um, but then I just did some like far as um, general studies. Uh, but my, I, I took a lot of classes in education, but just due to the football schedule, it was limited as far as what we can do for our study. I bet. Now, what was your interest in that? I mean, my interest in that, it was just more flexible uh, as far as just taking different classes because I wanted to do like, uh, I went, went to visit the School of Arts and I used to do a lot of computer work as far as designs and all that, but being that the football schedule was conflicted and everything, I couldn't do that. Um, so with the general studies, it allowed me to take a lot of classes in education because I love working with kids and love work, doing work in the community. I read that. I really did. <laughs> you are very active in the community. So as far as high school, can you please explain to the kids how you balanced your schoolwork and sports and kind of kept it together and kept your grades up? I was very important, you know, because without, without education, you know, there was no football. Um, you needed both. You know, sometimes, you, you know, students and kids, we think that it's just all about the sports, but academics is just important because football doesn't last forever. You know, we can get hurt at any given time. So you want to make sure that you have a good education. Um, just in case you, everybody don't make it to the NFL, you can also do other things. Excellent. That's true. So as far as nutrition, um, can you give the kids some nutritional advice? What's a, what's a healthy diet for you? What do you do to stay in shape and eat clean? Well, you know, lately I've definitely been taking care of my diet. I've uh, been drinking a lot of water, cutting back on the sugar, 2% um, milk. You know, just eating the, eating the right things, not eating late at night, not a lot of junk food as far as candy and because I, I love sweets. Yeah. So I had, to cu <laughs> I had to cut back on that. I didn't give it all up, yeah. but I just cut back a little bit on it. Now, what's your idea of a healthy meal, like a healthy dinner? Oh, a healthy dinner. Probably have like a turkey meatloaf. Um, green beans and that's usually it I don't eat nothing too big just eat something small I eat small meals you do. Yeah. Do you, so you eat small meals often yeah and you, know, you got to eat you know you want to eat maybe four or five times a day you know it's definitely important the first thing I do when I get up in the morning is I eat eggs you know eggs with cheese I love eggs so I eat about five scrambled eggs with cheese and that's usually I'm using my breakfast you know with some water and I come in at lunchtime and uh, Usually, eat a chicken, two pieces of ch uh, chicken, chicken breast with some kind of type of green vegetables, and I usually um, eat a snack right after that. Then I I eat at home dinner at home. Interesting. That's good. So uh, yeah, as far as exercise, what are some exercises you can recommend that are going to keep you in good condition that are that are somewhat easy? Maybe they can do at home or with their friends. Yeah, what I well what I try to do uh, throughout the football season um, because we have a we have a workout schedule here is I try to get up early in the morning. And I usually get on my, my exercise bike, probably do about three or four miles early in the morning on my bike. And then late at night before I go to bed, I do another three or four miles right before I go to bed. I have an exercise bike. It's, it's like a video game, so it's, it's fun at the same time. Yeah, I have a lot of fun with it. And that's usually my, my car, do a little cardio in the morning to get my day started a little bit at night before I go to bed. Okay, so as far as injury prevention, do you have any advice? What are the steps that you take to prevent injury? Oh, as far as muscle injury, because I've had some muscle injuries and a problem as far as pulled hamstrings and pulled calf muscles, it's staying hydrated. Okay. Staying hydrated, you definitely have to stay hydrated, drink a lot of water, drink Gatorade just to stay hydrated. Um, you know, you don't want to drink too much water because water ends up draining everything out of your body. So you want to put some Gatorade in it so you keep something in your body. You remember that? I've never heard that before. That's fascinating about drinking too much water. Yeah, you know, drinking. I don't think <laughs> Most yeah. people know that. Yeah, because they, they tell you all the time, drinking too much water actually flushes everything out of your body. You That's know? very informative. Yeah. So then when you, as far as playing sports, and playing, uh, playing sports and staying active, you know, drinking some Gatorade keeps things in your body as well. Okay. Yep. So growing up, did you have a mentor, somebody that you looked up to, mm -hmm. that you kind of counted on or looked up to a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a few different guys that I, I looked up to. 
Um, that was that was actually in my high school at the time that I was there. And uh, you know, it was a, by, a guy named by the name of Otis Washington. Um, he he went to Sacramento High with me. He went off and played football at Vanderbilt. Um, he was just a, a positive guy, somebody that you can look up to. He was a star football player, but at the same time, he was a humble guy, and he treated everybody with respect. He didn't, if you was the starter on the team to the, the guy that, that was on the bench, he treated everybody the same, and he always said positive things about people, you know, just on and off the field, and that was the guy that I just, I studied, because it was like, you didn't, he didn't have to tell everybody he played football, you just, you can just read his body language. He just, he had that certain swag to him that he was just a humble guy. He had that swag to him and he respected everybody. So that's a guy that I kind of molded myself by. Now, speaking of Saginaw High School, I, I did read that you have done a lot for your last high school. Can you kind of, not brag, but we want to hear what you did because that's, that's what it's all about. You've given back quite a bit. I know you donated sweatshirts and yeah. school supplies and... Well, you know, I, I do a, I do a lot of things uh, for my high school and you know for the city of Saginaw. But you know, sometimes I don't like for it to get out because I don't want people to think that I'm doing stuff for people to, to recognize me or pat me on my back. So I just I just do it because I know what's needed there. I knew when I when I was going to school there, things that was needed. So now I'm in a position to give back. Now, you know, I, I just give back. You know, and when I when I donated the money, that was something that I felt like needed to be done because here it is. You know, it's, it's rough in the city, you know, a lot of jobs is left. And some of these kids, you know, they, they look forward to playing sports. So um, a lot of them don't have the money to do it. And I knew that that was going to be a way of them not being mentored by coaches or maybe miss out on the opportunity to get a scholarship to go to school. So the money that I donated could have been worth 10 times as more if some of the students had an opportunity to get a scholarship to go to school. So I kind of look at it as an investment for them. It is. Yeah. That's a great way to look at it, a very unselfish way to look at it. Can you tell us a little bit about the foundation that you started? I didn't I didn't see too much about it. I just want to know about it. Yeah, you know, I've, um, I do a lot of stuff. In the front. I, I try to keep that low key, too, as far as the things that I do there. But Only kids are going to hear about this. They're going to know that you... You know, oh, but you work hard. I, I, had, I do a lot of different things. Even before I, just, I started my foundation about two years ago, but before then I was I was doing a lot of stuff that was foundation wise. That's why I started the foundation. Um, so every year in Pittsburgh and in the city of Saginaw, where I'm from, I had um, before school I did a back to school event called the First Impression, um, where 200, 150 boys and 150 girls. We do 150 free haircuts for boys and uh, pedicures for girls. Um, cool. Give away uh, 300 book bags um, with school supply in it. So I did that in Pittsburgh and I also did that in Saginaw. Then doing Thanksgiving, um, we give two, 200 turkeys away in Pittsburgh. And back at home, I give away like a supply, like paper plates, you know, um, utensils and all that for Thanksgiving meals back at home. On Christmas, uh, I did a Secret Santa where I had about 300 kids. I, I donated toys, came in. Milk and cookies with Santa. Took pictures with him, uh, so I did. I did that on Christmas. Um, I had my free football camp every year in Saginaw uh, for the. I think this is my seventh year, uh, where about 500 kids and everything is free. Um, free book bags, shirts, and we, we kind of call it a student athlete camp because I had the education part in it. Before you go out there on the field, you got to do the school part, and then you go out there on the field. Um, so I do that, and what else do I do? You do a lot. <laughs> I just, That's I just, a lot. I just, like I said, I just try to play my role. I try to, I, I do what I felt like when I was younger. I felt like athletes that was around my way, if they would have came back and, you know, because we look up to guys from our city or people that became successful, we look up to them. So I just do that. So I'm always at the high school. I'm always around doing something, going to talk, going to the juvenile centers, just always doing stuff. Uh, with people that sometimes you feel like they don't have a chance, so I'm, I'm involved with that. And definitely, oh, dang, I'm that's, talking too much. No, you're not. That's what this is about. <laughs> uh, group Hopefully, you'll inspire someone else to maybe do the same thing. Um, it's about community. <laughs> I love it. A group called uh, PAC, um, Prevention Against Crime Today. Um, a lady named uh, Valerie Dixon in Pittsburgh. Um, she had lost two sons, and um, I teamed up with her to help. Um, it's like Crime Stoppers. Wow. So I helped team up with her. It's like. People can call in and give tips on unsolved murders if they, if they have information they don't, they're afraid to, but they can call this number and um, you know, receive rewards if the crime is solved. So I got involved with uh, Valerie about uh, four years ago. So she would use my picture and have it in, around in Pittsburgh 
on you know different signs to call in. So I you know I help with that as well. That is very impressive. Thank you so much for all the helpful information. I, I'm glad that you told us that. I really am. It's been very nice to meet you. I'm Melinda Torgerson, signing off with Debonair Productions. We'll see you next week.